Hi, my name is Clement Calvino. I'm a PhD student in UCD, where I'm part of the WAVE group led by Frederic Diaz, and I'm founded by the current fellowship with the Marine Institute in Galway. My PhD is about wave and current interactions in coupled numerical models, which is about studying the interaction between waves and current from a numerical point of view. I'm not focusing too much on the theory or on the implementation of the theory, but more on the actual application in coupled models. And I'm doing that in order to improve the forecast capabilities and the accuracy of the models. So I can start by explaining how waves and current interact with each other. And although the two of them form a coupled system that should be studied as a whole, usually we divide this interaction in two. So first, the waves are acting on the currents by generating additional momentum in the flow. And the main evidence of that is the Stokes drift. So let's imagine that a wave is propagating on top of calm water. It will put the water particles into motion, like shown in the figure here. So at first glance, those particles are describing elliptic trajectories, but when looking more closely, those trajectories are not perfectly closed, and over time, a small drift can be observed. This is the Stokes drift. Now the other way around, currents can also affect the propagation of waves, and the most noticeable effect is the refraction of waves by the current. So this time, let's imagine that a wavefront is propagating against a current, like shown in the figure there. So the wavefront at the bottom will slow down because of the adverse current. And if the current is stronger in the middle, then the sides of the wavefront will go faster, which is inducing refraction uh, in the wavefront. And eventually, this can focus the waves into the middle line. So those were two examples of the interaction. And now in my numerical models, the couplings actually appear uh, through interaction terms that are added into the equations. So for the ocean, ocean part, the Navier-Stokes equations are ruling the evolution of key parameters, like the, velocity, uh, the velocities and the temperature. And the coupling uh, leads to an additional forcing term on the right-hand side uh, of the equations. So different formalism exists, and the one I'm using is actually the vortex force form formalism. For the wave spot, the wave spectrum is solved using the wave action balance, which is shown here. And the coupling with the currents um, appears as a correction of the wave group velocities, uh, wherever they appear in the equations. And as opposed to the navier stokes equations, this time the interaction terms appear on the left-hand side of the equations. Now for my research, I'm mostly focusing on two questions. So first I've set up a wave model for the Atlantic, where the grid is being refined when getting closer to Ireland. And a current field is forcing the model and also allowing to compute the interaction terms in the wave action balance that I showed previously. And based on that, I'm testing different ways to compute this current field and trying to assess the impact on the results of the simulation. So on the figure I'm showing here, the significant wave height uh, at one given moment is shown, and only a marginal difference uh, can be observed uh, among the different solutions used for the current input field. So at the moment, I'm having a closer look at those results to see if uh, any significant difference can be observed. So I'm also setting up uh, a coupled model for the region of Galway Bay. So this is one of the operational models that the Marine Institute is running in order to get their weekly forecast. And I'm trying to assess if a strong current interaction uh, can be observed uh, in this area. And if spending more resources by coupling the ocean model with the wave model is worth it. So that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye guys.